Hey, baby, what's up? We're in Sugarland, Texas. That's what's up. Sugar, Sugarland. Uh, as the Spanish called Azucar, Texas. Azucar. Oh, wow. You do know some Spanish. Azucar land, Texas. <laughs> Azucar. Um, so Sugarland, Texas. If I lived here, I think subconsciously, and I don't even know if this is possible, I would eat even more sugar and sweets than I currently do because- It feels like it's always on the mind. It's always on the mind. It's like almost like a commercial for sugar. Yeah. Why did they name this place Sugarland? It has to be a fat it's a good place. Quest- it's a good question. Now, we were told by the, the, the guy who's opening all the shows, who's fantastic, Chris Johnston, that Houston is the fattest city <laughs> simultaneously and also the most in shape city yeah, in the country. Which so makes no sense. It makes no sense. So if you're from Houston, and we know that you are, are, yes. you, are you fat or skinny? Yeah. Or are you skinny fat? Are you fat? Are you skinny? Skinny fat, fat skinny. What would you rather be? Right. Okay. I hear you. Ready for this. We, can, we should put some air on in here. Go ahead. If you had, if you had a choice, yeah. Okay. Now here's the thing. Okay. Listen, listen to the, the whole thing through. Okay. If you, if you ha- if you could be, you have to either be morbidly obese, sure, but you can't lose the weight. You're staying like that, or be a little bit overweight but have no leg. Uh, you're no a little bit overweight, but you're just a torso, no arms or legs. So you're either a torso, you're either an in shape torso. Or yeah. you're an obese person that cannot lose a pound, but you have full function of your arms and legs. Yeah. So, Are you like, is it like 600 pound life where they, they need a crane? No, you can get around, but barely. You're this close to needing a motorized scooter to like go to the deli. Okay. But uh, when I'm an in shape torso, do I have my. You're fully jacked. Yeah. But how do I get around that way? You're, you're just in such good shape that you find a way. <laughs> Take me through finding a way <laughs> without limbs. You're just, you just you roll. You've used a way to use your body. You has, don't have any assistance. It's not a caretaker. Or anything you have like no that. caretaker, and you can't have prosthetics. Well, I gotta imagine. What, I was gonna say I'll be whatever one's more mobile and practical, but I have to imagine. I want. I, I'd want limbs. I mean, you'd want limbs. Yeah, I have, right. I have to imagine. Right. Right. You can't lose the weight. I know both are really tough. If you if you're that immobile that you can't and you can't lose it. Yeah. But you can't. I mean, no, right. no limbs. All right. I think I shout s- out people with no limbs. Shout out limbless. People. God bless you. Okay. The by pimp has pulled up the Bayou City, which I I assume is Houston, right? The Bayou, is, oh Sugarland, the Bayou City. Uh, half an hour southwest of Houston got its name from the product it produced for nearly two centuries, uh, sugar. Sugarland served as the that, site of major U.S. sugar should producer. should have been our first guess. Yes. Sugar, Maine Sugar Refinery and Distribution Center from 1843 until the refinery shuttered its doors in 2003. Well, if it's, it's been shut since 2003, that's almost 20 years. What, let's rename Sugarland. Let's rename it. What yeah. should we rename it? Let's rename it Aspartame Land because it's better than... Sucralose. Sucralose Pla- Land. Sucraloseville. Sucraloseville. All right, you ready? You ready? Please. You can play this at home. Here's the game, and we're going to play it intermittently throughout the podcast. You have to say five things in a row, whatever topic, and if you take a breath and even think about it for a second, you're out. You're you out. ready? You're playing it on the bus all day. You ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, Go, wanna, give me it, babe. I'm ready. I'm, three. I'm in, I'm in a full zone. You, you have it already? Yep. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Five cereals. Go. Okay. Tricks, Lucky Charms, Reese's Puffs, Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios. I messed what? up. What? No, but it was... Cl- what do you guys think at home? Should we should Sal be assassinated for that? You you have <laughs> I was almost doing your technique. The clap of the technique. You clap. Now listen, throughout the pod, just just hit me with it and yeah. we'll do and we'll keep going okay. back and forth. All right. Um shit. So I mean you guys have to talk about Sal's hotel experience. I, oh yeah. Okay, Sal. Let me set it up. Sal, we checked into a hotel uh in San Antonio. I won't say the name. St. Anthony, roommate 67. Uh, <laughs> um, we checked into a hotel. Now, we were a little bit late. They didn't have the rooms ready. Things happened. But when Sal checked into well, his- Well, we, we were- we, It was 5 o'clock. They should have the rooms ready. They should have the rooms yeah. ready, yeah. Sorry if you guys are hearing the, the music upstairs. We're in the basement of the- uh, of the What is this called? The Smart Financial Center yeah. in Sugarland, Texas. This place in, is massive. It's massive. It's massive. It was built four years ago. Everything's state of the art. They have moving walls in the theater. Yes, they have moving walls in the theater. It's fantastic. And you're hearing them test the music system- uh, upstairs, and the reason why you're hearing the reverberations down here is because there's no people up there. 
<laughs> <laughs> and it's just about showtime. I love it. They, they were like, uh, they were showing us like, look, the, the walls can move in. They are actual like uh, mo- motored walls that move in or whatever. You see that one over there, and then we looked on the left, and the other one wasn't moved in. And we're yeah. like, what about this one? He goes, I broke last night. <laughs> Literally last night. Who the hell was in here last night that was breaking the motorized walls? Yeah. Who well, I don't know who it was. It must uh, have been. Uh, maybe it was G Easy. Yeah, G Easy. Who, who sells more tickets? Hey Bay Podcast or G Easy Pimp? Who do you think? Maybe G Easy. That's tough. That's tough. I don't Would know. G-Eazy, is G Easy? Does he do solo shows? Is he a DJ or a... no? He's a rapper. He, he raps. He, I know, but yeah, is, he, is he a producer more than that? No, no, no. I didn't he's mean like DJ. A, I meant he's, producer. He's supposed to be a headliner. Could we oh, okay. get Jeezy on the podcast? That's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, but what 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 would you want to ask? I'll tell I want to ask <laughs> about Halsey. I think his name is Jerry. His real name is Jerry. TT Jerry interviews Jeezy. Jerry, because because I watch his Architectural Digest open door, and I I took a tour of his home. Interesting. And I, think he, I think he calls it Jerryville or something like that. Yeah, and I got Austin, Texas. Okay, cool. All right, all right. Columbus, Ohio at the Palace Theater tonight. tonight. Cincinnati, Ohio at the Taft Theater tomorrow. Tomorrow. Sal Volcano and I co-headlining, doing 30, 40 minutes of stand-up each, then coming out and doing a mini Hey Babe at the end. Come be part of the show. It's been amazing, babe. It's been amazing. And then January 14th and 15th, I'll be at the Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas. Go to ChrisDComedy.com for those ticky wickies. Whoop, whoop. January 14th, I am in Des Moines. January 15th, I am in Indianapolis. And January 16th, I am at the Agora in Cleveland, Ohio. Get those tickets to SalVolcanoComedy.com. What? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Nice place okay. if you're watching, and we know that you are. We know that you are. I can't believe you clicked on that video. Oh, uh, I watch every Architectural Digest <laughs> open. I've seen every one like 20 times. What's uh, your favorite Architectural I swear Digest? To God. I swear to God. What's the number one? Um, it's like a crib. Top five Architectural Digest episodes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, uh, oh, now I'm on the spot. I, I, well, you, well, you said like G-Eazy wasn't bad. 50 episodes. Um, no, it's not. It's great. It's like cribs, but like they really dwell on the architecture and design. Okay. Speaking of Architectural Digest, uh, Jake Paul and Logan Paul uh, just announced today that they're both individually buying $22 million penthouses in the same Miami condo, in the same Miami building that's being built. $22 million uh, uh, penthouses. Each one of them have three bedrooms, you know, three floors, spiral staircase, and their own pools in the condo, both of them, and they're living next door to each other in, they're, they're, in Miami. They have a pool in their apartment. In West Philadelphia? Born and raised. There's pools in the apartment building. <laughs> yes, in their in their apartment. In their apartment. So and th- and there was also a pool for the for the residents, but they have their own pool. Wow, so called a plunge pool, which I don't know what that oh, means. Oh, okay, that's just a, a, that's just like a, a smaller pool, like a soaking. That's just a bathtub. A so, it's yeah, <laughs> it's not that impressive. It, oh, so so the plunge pool is like not that big of a deal. No, it's like it's like basically like a couple people go in it. They are f-ing peasants, huh? Yeah, I mean plunge pool. I mean, why couldn't you get? What a, are we doing? I, I've seen people with an Olympic. Inside, indoor, in, indoor. Yeah. Does it smell? What, in what Does way? it smell Chlorine? the whole house? Yeah. Well, I'm just joking. Oh, yeah. Oh no, but God. didn't you see? Didn't you? I don't know if we talked about it, hey babe when you went to like somebody really wealthy's house in England and their pool like their floor <laughs> yeah. retracted. Did we yeah. talk about that yeah. on hey babe already? Because yeah. that's sometimes like that keeps me up at night. Yeah, thinking yeah. about that. But you well, never they, finished like five the in the hotel, world. Sal's hotel. Oh, Sal's hotel, San Antonio story. Um, um, when you checked into your, so what happened was is I get into my room I, I get up to my floor my not my key card wasn't working the actual battery on the door was dead it didn't work so i'm going down on the elevator and then i so see they had to replace the door they had to replace the act well no they put just put me in another room okay. just a full other room then i'm coming in the elevator to go down to the lobby to be like hey my you know and sal's girl is getting in the elevator yeah. and she says we need to change rooms i said what happened and she says, what did, you, what, what did we, you guys see? There's blood on the comforter. <laughs> and a baby crib. There was a crib in the room. And I think probably the people behind, right before us had a baby. And I think they just left. Because the reason the rooms were already at five mm-hmm. is they said they had titanium members. Uh, right. Uh, that, and that, now they, that there was blood late. on the sheets because they, ju- they had the baby in the room? What are you saying? Well, I don't know. The blood, on the, the blood on the comforter, I don't know if it came from the baby. But there was a crib in the room. And they didn't remove the crib, and it smelled like diapers in there. And that and that crib looked like wow. it looked like an old school crib. The picture you showed me, where it's a little, it was a little haunting. Yeah, where it was like a little bit like I don't know. Maybe there was a moil in there. What's a moil? You don't know what a moil is? A moil is a rabbi. Yeah. Oh, so you think they had a full bris and they were sucking the blood out of uh, a circumcised penis? No, you don't know. Is it, it very hot in here? 
<laughs> it's a little hot. Okay. I don't know the difference between bri- bris and broche. I always get that. What's a broche? A brooch? A brooch. What's a bris and a brooch? And what's a what's a um? Which is the one for the Jewish boys and which is the one for the Jewish girls? What's okay, the difference so between you a, just, I bar don't mitzvah even, and bar mitzvah? I'll never. Uh, bot is female. Bot. Bar is male. But how do you remember but, that? But uh, because bar mitzvahs, I don't know how you remember anything. I used to bartend a lot of bar mitzvahs. <laughs> okay, so here's how you can think about it. Here's here's a quick way to remember it for for any of our Jewish people at home or people who want who are studying Judaism. Bar mitzvah is for boys, and when you think about that, is bar is it's very um phallic a bar. It looks feel a penis. Where bat bat b a t is also very phallic. <laughs> it's bat's even more phallic than bar directly. No bat bat makes me think of China and China are pussies. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. This is this is the wrong podcast. <laughs> now I did want to almost br- got chaotic. I did want to bring up the conversation you guys had about the hotel sheets. Okay, so let me tell you something about this hotel sheets. And we were talking about this two days ago. We were talking about this. We were in Dallas. Then we went to San Antonio. Now in, in Sugarland. But in Dallas, I made a statement to you guys in the room, and I said while I was eating uh, shrimp fettuccine Alfredo at eleven thirty at night with a baked apple pie in a skillet, I yeah. said to you, which I, I only had eight hundred <laughs> calories left, so I went over. Um, what I said to you was, I'm confident that most hotel services, maids and all that, don't fully change the sheets. They spray the sheets to like disinfect stuff. And you are almost always sleeping on sheets that weren't really changed. They were just sprayed. I, I can't believe that to be true. I had to believe there's a law. Okay. But then the very next day you check to a hotel that has blood on the sheets. Yeah. So that was excellent timing on your part. So, I mean, you know, the spray didn't get all of it out. Now, sheets are usually changed, it says, pin pulled up. Sheets are usually changed between guests, and sometimes state law requires it. But there's no guarantee, which is all we've gotten tonight, we're not in the bonus, that they will be. (laughs) (laughs) As for bedspreads, forget it. They said for bedspreads, forget it. Countless hidden camera investigative TV programs have confirmed they aren't washed regularly. Okay. So forget it on the bed spreads. Bed spreads I, I took for granted already. I, I mean, not for granted. I took as I assumed always stay away from the bed spread. Don't lay on the bed right. spread. Because they can't, they can't launder bed spreads every time. The sheets, I got to be honest. If, if the case is that the sheets are not really being washed and they're being Febreze and we're not being told, I want to do a class action lawsuit. <laughs> With every listener we have, I will. I will be the. No, I, it, it, there has to be someone on the podcast that either you work in the in the hotel industry and know inside, or your mom or dad or family member has. Please email the podcast, heybaypodcast at gmail.com, or just DM us and let us know because I really want to know. Like, if you ever, you know, like you've told us behind the scenes secrets of, of what a deli looks like. We've had people tell us yeah. what happens in, you know, food chain restaurants. What happens in the, what are we sleeping on? Are we sleeping in fecal matter and, <laughs> and nail clippings and oh. bed? But like, what are we actually sleeping in? I will tell you, I saw an investigative report uh, <laughs> in, in on, on, on the television and, uh, <laughs> I saw uh, uh, they had uh, hidden cameras in there, and uh, uh, I guess what do you call them? The room cleaners. I, think, uh, I, mean, I say maids. Is that, is that is that is that like no? But not what good? about you? Because know, a male's not a maid. Cleaning person. Really? The cleaning lady. Oh, the cleaning person. Cleaning lady. But a ma- I say I would say a, a, a maid is male. A oh, nurse yeah? can be male. Okay. So I thought maid is like from from maiden. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know. You could be right. But anyway, don't ever 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 never. Never, ever, 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 ever use the glassware. Really? Yes. I mean, wish maybe, I knew about that about an hour ago. I know. I mean, I, maybe at nicer establishments, they're a little bit more buttoned up, but they had them in like, um, and, and the, they, would, they would just rinse them out only, or they would clean them with the rag that they're dusting everything uh-huh. else with. So, like, they'll go in the room and they'll spray Windex and they'll clean, like, the tops or something. And then they just picked up the glassware and they just went like that with the actual dirty, dusty Windex rag yeah. in, the, in the glass. It's, I mean, yeah. you know what? Honestly, the thing- never since that day, years ago, I've never, ever, ever used the glass. The thing is, though, when you're drunk enough, like, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I, I don't really, <laughs> I, can't, I can't recall a time that when I've really used the glassware. I've definitely done it. But I can't recall a time when... You know, because they're always turned over. I don't think I I barely use it. Glass of water by the bed, alcohol seltzer. I do bottle, babes. I bottle water, yeah. bottle water by the bed, and I I have many, 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 many times put my face like run the water in the bathroom sink and drank directly from the faucet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's bad. Is yeah. it? No, because I mean I'm drinking the faucet water. Right, right, right. I used to drink out of hoses as a kid. Right, right. 
A spigot. We'd find a spigot on the side of a building, turn it on, and drink out of that. Why don't we have to get racist, but... (laughs) 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 Sorry, I was a racist child. Yeah. No, yeah, you know, it's true. I mean, but the thing is, too... Go ahead. Well, no, because I'm just saying, like, you know, as we... As generations are moving on, you know, I know people say we're getting softer, and that's a generalization. Overall, though, it seems like we are because, you know, like it was very, very like my like, you know, your I don't know if was your mother a smoker or no? Yeah, your uh, mother at one point may have smoked cigarettes when she was pregnant with you, not because she was trying to do any malintent. And my mother malintent. Uh, we're in the court of law. Let's, okay, let's in the court of law. Yeah, um, not with any because. It's just at, at that time, like in the 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. there was no research that smoking harmed a baby. So like now it's like if you even breathe in secondhand smoke, like women are like, no, 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 if I smoke one cigarette, like my kid's going to be deformed. When right. it's like for millennia, yeah. you were just breathing shit in and yeah. everybody was fine. Yeah. So, I remember when, my, when I was really like when I was a kid, my mom, if she had to smoke, she wouldn't smoke in the house, but she would go into the bathroom and smoke and, and then she'd come out of, and out of the bathroom. Right. Like, she'd have a quick cigarette in the bathroom so she wasn't smoking in the house. Right. So I guess she kind of knew. <laughs> right. I don't know. I should ask her if she smoked with me when she was preg. Fuck, Mary kill. Mom, dad, grandma. All right. Well, obviously, <laughs> I'd fuck my dad. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> you had a, you had obviously, it's your question. I killed them all. <laughs> you, had, you had a full answer. Now, I did want to bring up, Sal told us the first thing he does when he enters a hotel room. Yeah. Is, Which, what, what is, is that? What is the first thing he does? I mean, I drop my bag, and before I do a single thing, I pick up the phone, I order four pillows. I order four more pillows. Usually there's at least four. Sometimes they'll try to pull a fast one on you and there's like three. But sometimes you come in and there's like a pillow that is as good as a, f- a, 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 a pillowcase with nothing in it. Have yeah. you ever seen those? They're like yeah. flapjacks. Flapjacks. They they, they, they they are this thin. You could stack three in a row. It's not the same as a regular size pillow. Shout out the Ramada in Bloomington, Minnesota. I stayed there when I was doing the House of Comedy in the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota. The pillows were like concrete that I remember each night. I was there for four nights because I was doing a Wednesday to Sunday. I slept on my book bag. I filled my book bag up with my dirty laundry and used that as a pillow. That's wild. I could have at any point just did what you did and called and asked for extra pillows. But at that point in my travel experience, right. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. You, you, you can't even do that. Well, yeah. he, he said there was a pillow menu. Yes. Uh, That's crazy. No, but you, you I mean, I, I, like a little bit like nice hotels or, or hotels are trying to go the extra mile. Like I've even had a pillow menu at like a, a, an airport Westin. What? Yeah, really. Are they from Hamlocker and Schmeller? Ha- Ham- Hamlocker, Hamlocker, Schlemmer. Uh, the best gift I've ever received from anybody, including like the gift of life my mother gave me, even better than that, is Sal's gave me a pillow from Hamlock on a Schlimmer one year for Christmas, and it was the best thing I've ever gotten. I still to this day have that pillow. If literally, literally, if you threw me out of my house and burnt everything, if you burnt my clothes on fire and said, get out, as long as I had that pillow, I'd be fine. I could recover. You, you still have that? So I still have mine. I use them. It was cooling gel. Too, there was like these little, yeah. like these little, like little, like uh, lines in it that have cooling it, it, it gel. It can't get hot. You know, cool is the other side of the pillow. You're always on the other side of the Shout pillow. Shout out, Stuart Smith, Stuart Scott, R.I.P. R.I.P. Stuart Scott. R.I.P. Stuart Scott. Um, but mine have have gone the way of the dodo bird. Now mine are, are no good. Mine are getting shoddy. They don't stay cold anymore. They're. I, I mean, I've used them for four years. You know what? I got to be honest with you. And listen, they haven't been. They're not a sponsor now. I doubt they'll be a sponsor. But I gotta be honest with you, yeah. and this may be painful. Yeah, Tommy John does not last. I have got holes upon holes, holes yeah, so does Jay. in my Tommy John underwear. Like I'm talking about full holes where I sit down, my nuts cut, hit the back of I'm, my pants. I'm telling you this. This is what I think. I think you're using fabric softener because I've had I have like 30 pairs, and I I have finally got my first hole in one of them. Finally. But why? But Sal, how can I, how can I have a pair of underwear that can't survive fabric softener? It's got to survive Texas I think chili farts. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the type of fabric it is. You have the second skin. Yes. Yeah, I think it's the type of something. Something reacts with the second skin fabric. I'd love to watch Chris do his laundry. What is you your know, laundry? Routine? My laundry. Uh, first of all, you I do, do it or you you drop it off. No, I do my I do my laundry full on. Do my laundry. I do my kids' <laughs> laundry. I do the laundry. The only thing I do because I just think it's a f- myth. I don't separate whites and and colors. I just throw them all in, and I've never had a problem. I've never had a problem with any item of clothing that's gotten ruined. 
You're very progressive. Granted, I, exactly. Yeah. I'm not. A, I ain't about that segregation. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, Sean King. You've taught me. I, I. But the only thing I will say is I don't have a lot of white clothing. Yeah, me so either. maybe that. So so pretty much when I'm, you know, anything that I have that's not black or dark right. blue is is underwear, and right. I don't. Nobody cares about those. Nobody's right. separating their undies. Right. But that's but that's what. So you do your own laundry. I so do you use fabric my, softener? I use um I use okay so I have these um I don't know what they're called but it's a cap you put a cap full of, of it in first they're like little pebbles that are supposed to like get you know what I'm talking about that is what is it called that softener but they're supposed to like get out the athletic if they're for like athlete athleisure stuff where it's like if you got like that stinky like when your clothes smell like a wet mop after yeah. exercise uh, yeah. it's supposed to get that smell out and then I put a cup full of Tide either directly onto the clothes or I pull out the little thing on my um in my washing machine. Yeah. But I don't know if I'm supposed to pour them directly onto the clothes, I, but I, I do that. I don't think you are. I think you're supposed to pour it in the water. I but why why it does fill. why if you pour it onto the direct <laughs> clothes, what does that do? It ruins the clothes? I think it's not gonna be um just my guess it's not gonna be distributed properly. How many dryer uh sheets do you use on on a on a on a moderate load? How many dryer sheets will you put in? How many dryer <laughs> sheets do you put in on a moderate sheets? load of laundry? Two to three. Two to three. See that—that's the only issue that I have, and I've been spoken to about that by Jasmine. I put upwards of ten dryer sheets in the dryer. And you want to know why your Tommy th- John's getting holes blown in them? Too much. I, I for me, it can't be dry enough. You, listen, pick <laughs> yourself up. Pick yourself up some dryer balls. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait a second. You have I've a dryer? Of, do you have I've dryer heard balls? Tide Pod. Shout out Tide Pod Challenge. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but dryer <Shut> balls. <laughs> dryer balls. Yeah, dryer balls. Pick yourself up some. So they, you, you so guys don't use dryer these sheets? balls that you throw into the dryer. I've seen them as like um, almost like cloth type balls, and I've also seen them as like hard rubber with like almost like um, little uh, little uh, like spikes on them. Like um, like they look like the coronavirus. Like the coronavirus, <laughs> and you throw like three or four in there, and they just they just bounce around. They do their thing, and they I guess what the, the theory is that they kind of keep the clothes flipping and flopping, and they hit the, they hit the, the, like they hit into them, and they keep moving them. With the weight of the balls and then like hitting them, and I think that it helps, uh, it helps coax them to dry faster and more evenly. Am I right about that? Well, why wasn't she that says no. Why wasn't that one hundred percent right? She's saying they're wool. They massage the fabric so it's and it okay. softens it okay. naturally. Did, right now, it's 2020. Well, when this episode is this episode will come out in 2021, we're on the verge, on the precipice of 2022. You know what? He gets a Cuban link bracelet, and he's dropping words like malintent and precipice. I'm a different person. I'm a different person. I swear to God, I, I, we have done 60 episodes. Those are the two biggest words you've ever used back to back. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Unbelievable. For word. Um, t- to this day, my aunt Janet, shout out my aunt Janet. To this day, I mean, fully gorgeous, fully renovated house. On, I mean, you know. You know, very, um, you know, like new school like us, you know, knows, you know, like probably knows like all Adele's new songs and Drake's new songs. You know, very modern woman. She has an air fryer. I don't know any of those songs. She has an air fryer. Like she's, she's on the net. You know what I mean? No, and she's got an yeah. air fryer. She's with it. She knows, she knows what's going on. Yeah. She, to this day, has our washing machine in her kitchen, washes her clothes, has Ample space for a dryer, but instead puts her clothes out on a, a clothesline. Oh, and old school. With a, with a crank that she has, puts them on, and then has to f- run feverishly, watches the news watches the news like she's in an air traffic control tower to make sure that it's not going to rain and then gets the clothes back in if there's even the slightest chance of rain. To this day, she air dries her clothes. Why does she, why does she prefer it? Does she tell you? She's, she, said, she said, it's the way I've always done it. It's what I'm comfortable with. She's like, you know, whatever. I'm 55 years old. I'm not going to change it now. She's 55 years old. And she knows all of Drake's new hits. New all of Drake's new hits. Shout out my Aunt Jenna. Every time Drake drops something, yeah. she knows it. She has, she's... She my grandparents used to, hang, we had no dryer. When I lived with my grandparents growing up, we had no dryer. Actually, the house couldn't handle it. The electricity in the house couldn't handle yeah. it. It was an older house. Yeah. And we uh, line hung all the, everything to dry. Right. And my, we had a big, big... We, my grandfather, it was the length of the house, we had an attic, a full height attic, the length of the house. And they, they hung the rope from one end of the house to the other in the attic. Wow. So they would go up to the attic to hang clothes. That must be fun, though. It was fun. We go up there with the dogs. The dogs would be running back and forth. Running back and forth. Hey, listen. Babel, I've been learning a new language. I literally been learning. I've learned well, Spanish, Well, they have 14 French. languages. Which one have you learned? 
I've learned Spanish, French, and Russian. That's unbelievable. Fully fluent. B a b b e l. Babel. Babel. It's a language learning app. It's our favorite. They have fifteen minute bite sized lessons. They make it fun. They're so. They, and every other learning language app uses artificial intelligence. AI. Not them. No. They use actual language experts. Linguistic that experts. That came together. They came from all different races, religions, cultures, and creed. They came together at one to summit. Make Babel. This is it. If you want to connect with your grandparents, you want to try. Travel. You want to impress a gal, whatever you want to do, or a guy. You want to just, you want to be able to watch Telemundo. Whatever you whatever want it to is. do, yes. Babbel will help you get there. And it's a fun way to learn. It's a fun way to learn. And we're, you're going to get a sick discount. The discount on Babbel is unbelievable. If you go to babbel.com right now and use the promo code Hey Babe, that's B A B B E L.com, promo code Hey Babe. You get three months free on a six month subscription. Right. So, that so if you purchase three months, right. if you purchase a three month subscription, you get an additional three for a six month subscription for the price of a three month subscription. All you got to do is go to babble.com, promo code Hey Babe. Tell us that you did it in the language that you learned. That's B A B B E L dot com slash Hey Babe. That's what it is. Babble, language for life. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Boom, boom. We love BetterHelp. I use it. Sally Babes uses it. Homeless Pimp uses it. Oh. We love we love BetterHelp. They've helped us. They've been with us for forever. From day, literally, I don't think I could have gone through this podcast for a year without the help of BetterHelp. We're coming up. We, we just passed our year anniversary. We're at the last episode. The last episode of the year. BetterHelp has we've been with us through a lot of it. And you can start communicating with a uh, with a uh, uh, health healthcare mental health professional in under forty eight hours. There's a broad range of expertise available. Um, services available for clients worldwide. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's really it's good. All it's all done securely online. Online, you don't even have to worry about. You COVID, health, whatever. Message your counselor whenever you want. Whenever you want. They pull counselors from everywhere, so you'd have uh, more options than if you were searching locally. Yes. Okay, yes. But, you know, that's why we're on there. We're learning. We're, we're learning. We're learning. And if you go to betterhelp.com slash heybabe, that's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash heybabe, you're going to get 10% off your first month, okay? And that's huge. Everybody's got mental health issues right now. Betterhelp.com slash heybabe, 10% off your first month. That's a nice savings. I have a house or when you were a little kid or, or, or be in a house that, went, that had a laundry chute? No. Like a laundry chute? That's, That's sick. Fun. That feels like something from Webster. Yeah, no, one. No, I had a friend. Do you know Webster? Emmanuel, is that what you're talking about with us? Is Emmanuel that Lewis. Well, that's Arnold Jackson, played by uh, Gary Coleman. But believe is that Webster? Not, believe it or not, in the 80s, in the late 80s, in the 80s, late 80s, there were two small, I guess they weren't little people. Were they little people? I, yeah. There was no. They weren't little people though. T Gary Coleman and Emmanuel Lewis were two young black boys that were older than they appeared. That right. that that um that were television sitcom stars in different sitcoms. Yeah. So what you talking about, Willis? Is different not strokes. Okay. And Webster was the titular, titular. Yeah. Character titular is you're using Cuban link words right now, Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> yeah, and and then so he's his little little small fry. See, by the George way, George Papadopoulos was his father on the show. Uh, <laughs> he's a guy from the. He's a football player. That guy, he's a football player. By the way, is there anyone pimp that you've ever met in your life who's a white man in his forties that's watched more black sitcoms than Sal Volcano? No, no, black sitcoms are my jam. That's you, every, if, if, there's if not I, a black sitcom that Sal hasn't seen fully every episode end to end. They're the best sitcoms. They actually are. Yeah, the I mean, Fresh is Prince of Bel Air. Fresh Prince of Bel Air, in my opinion, is one of the best sitcoms of all time. Family Matters, one of the best of all time. Did Love you, it. You heard they're going to bring back Fresh Prince as a serious drama. That no. I don't want them to do. Yeah, I, that's I, what oh, I heard. with the cast? No, 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 with a young cast. Oh, F that. I don't want to see that. Who's got time for that? Ain't nobody got time to for that. To be honest with you, because even the I like because <laughs> even like um uh Full House when they brought it back on Netflix, I just didn't love it. It just yeah. there was some you know, Stephanie was on crack. Like I didn't like Do you guys like sequels? No. Nah. Okay, it the depends, only if it's the, done right. The only sequel, the sequel that I'll say that I would pref I prefer of the original, and I know people may go into uproar right now and go crazy, but I'm gonna tell you it, and it's a tie. I'll give you two. I'll give you two sequels that I think are, in my opinion, light years better than the first one. I, okay. Movie or show? Movie. Okay. Two, Wayne's World 2. Okay. Back to the Future 2. Uh, 
Oh, I don't think Back to the Future 2 is light years ahead of one. See, I like two. I, I thought I knew where you were going with this. I thought you were going to say Terminator Can I tell you Godfather. something even crazier that you may, that like, listen, if I get punched in the face for this, I get punched in the face for this. Back to the Future 3 is better than the first two. That's what Q thinks, and it's my least favorite one. Did he just say that on Taste Buds? Are we on Taste Buds? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he contends that that's his favorite one, and I'm like, it's my least favorite one. Back to the Future 3, in my opinion, is better than 1 and 2 combined. <laughs> oh, that's you're going to get punched in the face on the streets now. <laughs> Listen to me. Don't hit him too hard when you see him. No, I mean, Good Times, uh, The Jeffersons, Sanford and Son, uh, even Martin's so funny, too. Mar Martin's classic. Uh, yeah. I yeah. will tell you something. I don't think we've mentioned this on Hey Babe yet. Have I talked about Yellowstone? Did I talk about it on last Hey Babe? I'm sure. I watched sure. the first episode. <laughs> I'm sure. And you, you didn't, didn't like the first episode. I did. But you fell asleep. No. She fell asleep. Okay. I watched the first ep and I and I saw all the happenings at the end. If you recall. Yes. S goes down. Yep. And then I'm ready to watch part two. Let me tell so you something right two. now. The opening episode of season four of Yellowstone is is it is the best episode I've ever seen of a television show period Whoa. end of sentence from the from the action to the drama to the soundtrack it's got it all it's got it all and now here's the thing about what's happening now now if you watch Yellowstone in the middle of Yellowstone yeah like season three they decide to to get another storyline going about the about what the fit Kevin Costner's his name is John Dutton in yeah. the show and, he, and, and he's on the Dutton Ranch. Yeah. So they decide uh, randomly in season three, one of the episodes just opens up, like episode six or something like that, just opens up of what the Dutton Ranch looked like in 1883. Oh. Like the beginning of the Dutton Ranch. And Tim McGraw is playing Kevin Country Cossin. Music's Tim Country McGraw? Country star Tim McGraw and Faith Hill are the lead characters. Faith, in Country Music's Faith Hill? Country Music. Are they married? CMT Superstar, I it, think they is are. It, isn't Faith Hill and Tim McGraw married? I think they aren't, are. Aren't they married? I, no, they are. CMT Superstars, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. Does Faith Hill sing, man, I feel like, like a woman. woman. I think she does. I think Gonna she does. Happen. Oh, no, and, Faith Hill sings. And by the way, that song, I mean, that will open up next episode with that. Man, I feel, I feel like, like a hey, babe. babe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, girls. <laughs> Um, so with Emmanuel Lewis on a sitcom, there was a, you know what a dumb waiter is? A dumb waiter? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the guy we had last night at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, dude. it's a pulley system. Okay, where it's a little door in a house, and it with a platter on it, and it's like a pulley. Uh, I guess maybe there's electric ones. I don't know, but old school, and it would be on old like mansions and or old big home Victorian homes or what have you, so they could transport food and things down to yes, another floor yes, without yes, carrying yes. it. So in Webster, there was a dumb waiter in the house, and they used to put the kid in there. He was a little, the little kid, and they used to. Br he, they used to put him downstairs. Okay. How many kids got killed in a dumb waiter over the years? Oh, have to be have to be a lot. Yeah, that's why they stopped making them. So let me tell you something real quick about 1883. So so 1883. It's, I've never seen a television show do this. Yellowstone is happening. Yeah. All of a sudden, in the middle of season three, they unveil unveil. The, you think it's just doing flashbacks? Like, oh, Tim McGraw is in this show. That's interesting. He fucking yeah. did a little bit part in the show. All of a sudden, Paramount Plus comes out and says, we're making an entire show called 1883, and we're airing the first episodes and second episodes of 1883 while season four of Yellowstone is happening simultaneously. So characters of two television shows Get that, that are happening at the same here. time. And then you ready for this? You ready for this? I'm No, I don't know if I am. There's a scene. Hold on. There, what I'm about to tell you, make sure your balls are secure. All right. There's a scene in 1883 where Tim McGraw wakes up on the battlefield of Antietam Battle, which is a real battle that happened in, in the Civil War. He wakes up on the battlefield and... Love is a battlefield. battlefield. As a Confederate soldier, because he's from Texas, you know, you'll get the story of they migrate from Texas to Montana with the Dutton Ranches. Um, uh, he wakes up on the battlefield as a Confederate soldier and everyone in his platoon or whatever is dead because he's a general. And then he sits down and the Union Army, which is still there because they had just won the battle... You know, sees him get up, and instead of killing him, the leader of the Union Army of that battle walks over, and you could just see the Union Army, Union Army soldiers' shoes and pants. He sits down. Tim McGraw starts crying. They're sitting on a bench together in the middle of the battlefield. Tim McGraw starts crying, and the the Union soldiers just rubbing his back. Spoiler alert! No, no, uh. he's just rubbing his back, saying, "I know, buddy. I know. 
Meaning, like, he understands what the war is and, and sure. how, okay? What he's dealing with. And you're like, oh, wow, that, that's cool. That's a nice scene. Then the camera pans up. You know who the Union soldier is? Tom Hanks. Television and movies, Tom Hanks? Philadelphia's own Tom no Hanks. No way. He's in, a, he's in a TV show now? He survived AIDS and made it all the way to 1883. Wow. He went back in time to 1883. Tom Hanks. Oh, if they're pulling Tom Hanks, this thing has to be huge. Tom Hanks. And then, in, in, so, you're, so you're like, I can't believe Tom, they got Tom Hanks. That must, they must have blown their budget. Episode two, the sheriff of one of the towns that they just migrated into. Mick Jagger. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton. Well, I would have done Billy Bob Thornton first, then Mick Jagger. No, then yeah. then yeah. Tom Hanks. It's hard to follow Tom <laughs> because Hanks because you're like you because you think they blew their budget. I, you know where's Billy Bob Thornton been? He's I in haven't 1883. seen him since Bad Santa. He's stuck in 1883. Which show do you like better? You want to you want to know you want to know the truth? <sighs> I I told you two weeks ago privately, yeah. but I'll share it on the podcast that. Yellowstone was the best show I've ever seen. I told you that it was The Sopranos if it took place in Montana, sure. and I meant that. Okay. After seeing two full episodes of 1883, I'm ready to tell you that 1883 is the best show I've ever seen in my life. You're telling me that a period piece. Yes. A period drama even. Yes. Oh, from the 1800s. Two episodes you've seen. It, it's I'm the telling best you, 1883, ever. it's like if The Sopranos took place in the wild, wild west in 1883. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the show Webster is as if The Sopranos <laughs> lived uh, with a football player, George Papadopoulos, and they put all The Sopranos in the dumbwaiter and put them up and down. That's like Webster. Imagine James Gale Delfini has a little black boy. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what. <laughs> Again? No. Uh, okay, you ready for this? Yes. I got another idea for a guest for Hey Babe. Okay. Okay. There's a man, and he's all over the news. Five characters from The Sopranos. Go. James Gandolfini, Christopher. F fuck. AJ. Yeah, yeah. Edie Falco. I know. I'm out. I'm out. You're all over the charts, I'm too. I'm out. I'm out. Okay. So is my heart rate. Um, the There's a man who faked being who faked being disabled to get his diaper changed has been arrested again. So there was a man walking around making believe he was disabled just because he had a fetish that he liked wearing a diaper. That guy right there? And then would get his diaper yep. changed, would get his diaper changed. He's been arrested now for about the fifth time. What photo is that of him? <laughs> he looks like a deranged lunatic. Well, we were wondering if we could get him, if, 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 if he's vaccinated and willing to wear a mask. <laughs> if he'd come on, hey, <laughs> <laughs> How could he get be arrested like after the third time? With they're, they're like, oh, he did it again. There's a lot. How of, is he still able to do it? There's a lot of people that fake disabilities. That's a very, very, very common thing to fake because you get so much service and assistance. Do you ever see? Speaking <laughs> of, we were doing those investigative reports at the hotels. Do you ever see the one where they sometimes they'll follow people that are on a corner with a sign asking for money, oh, saying no. they're disabled. And uh, they, they they did a whole report, and there was like a guy with crutches, would like asking for money all day, and they followed him, and he'd like go on the crutch, and then once he got around the corner, he'd just take his crutches, throw in his car, and just drive away. He followed him to his house. He was a regular guy with a regular job. Now that they found they found a woman doing it. Well, they, well, I'm gonna call it. Have out you ever been conned? No, I, I haven't been. Well, uh, all yes. year long. Yes, all year long. I've been con yeah, actually, yes, I've been conned. Okay. I've been conned. I'm just naive about it. I've been conned. Um, you were about to say something. We'll come back to the con. Uh, no, but this, speaking of a con, I want and I want to I want to name names right now. His name is Charlie K Kipovich. Kipovich. If you get an email from him as a comedian, do not give him anything. He makes believe that he has cancer and all these other things to get free uh, autograph signings, merchandise, tickets. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. So if you get that, but he uses his real name, or uh, or that, you know, he's assuming he change his name. But it's 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 a lie. He doesn't have any of this stuff. Also, we have some bad news about an NFL legend. John Madden just died. John Madden no. died. Uh, I have to be honest with you, and this is no disrespect. I thought John Madden died in 2018. <laughs> I, I granted, I haven't heard much from Madden in a while outside of the game. No, but I love John Madden. But Wait, I, he just died. Meaning, like, while well, we were, he died like, today. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that sucks. Just another legend. Yeah, that's that's sad. Oh, so man. John Madden. I got end zone in the sky. <laughs> I've never, I've never, <laughs> um, I've never. But I mean that heartfelt. John yeah, Madden. I loved. <laughs> I loved him in Little that's Giants. <laughs> was he in Little Giants? Yeah, he was in a play. Uh, he was in uh, one part of Little Giants when the the football players. Um, Show up to the little giants camp because their their tour bus made a wrong turn. Remember, okay. and they like tell them 
You, you know, you know the scene of Little Giants. Do you know Little Giants? Yeah, movie? I do. I, got, uh, I, you people take these for uh, indigestion. What do you take them for? Intimidation. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then the it, freezer. The yes, fridge? the freezer. Yeah, yeah. Becky, Becky O'Donoghue. Yeah. Uh, uh, the free. Uh, no, what was it? The ice box. The ice box. Yeah, yeah and, the then, and then their famous play is called the Annexation of Puerto Rico. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember Madden in it though. Matt, yeah, he was. See, how buddy? old was he, pimp? Uh, eighty-five. That's a nice Aww. life. You make it to the... Because, you know, here's the truth of the situation. You don't really want to get into the 90s and 100s because you're most likely going to live a very painful life. You're not controlling your bowel. I feel like 85 is nice. Yeah, unless you're a together 100-year-old. Like Casey Jost and Nicole, their grandmother, I think, is like 103, lives on her own. Wow. Lives on her own? Yeah. I thought you said she's a writer for SNL. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like when I was cool. little, in my head, for some reason, I was like, 100 is what you live to. Right. I always just thought, oh, 100, because my great-grandma lived to 99. Oh, my God. Wow. And then, you know, and, and then so on and so forth. I had older people in the family, and I just always thought, like, some for some reason, 100 stood out to me as a round number. And it was just like 100, it's 100 cents and a dollar. I just, 100. When I say hello fresh, what do you say? America's number one meal kit. I'm telling you, Sam. What am I, asshole? <laughs> no, you're not because you're using HelloFresh. Now you've t- I've been cooking. I've been learning how to cook. And now I would say no no. I was learning how to cook with HelloFresh. Now I'd say, because of the amount of time I've been with them, I know how to cook. You leveled up now. You're- whatever you want. Whatever you want. You're you now get, a cook looking to become a better cook. You can get Gordon Ramsay in here. Yeah. I'll punch him in the face yeah. with a fistful of pappardelle that I made right. from HelloFresh. Right. That's what it is. That's what it is. New Year's is a great time to focus on what's most important to you, whether it's saving money or ordering less takeout, learning to cook, prioritizing your wellness, all that jibba jabba. HelloFresh is here to help with endless options to make cooking at home simple and enjoyable. How about this? And they got the quick and easy meals. They take 20 minutes to make, clean up. They got 30-minute versions, 20-minute versions. And the food is fantastic. And you ready for this? You want to know what I'm about to tell you right now? They got desserts now. You want to know what the desserts is? Please. Hold your balls. Dunkaroos. What? Dunkaroos what? cookie what? dough. What? They have Dunkaroos cookie dough. What? They're unbelievable, and they're 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. That's over $65 per month you save. And right now... and. Here's what I want to tell you. Listen to me right now. Put that, Stop what you're doing because the promo code I'm about to tell you is real. We have to fact check this yeah. with Haven and say, are you sure you're running a business this way? Because it's like it feels like you're not making any money yeah. if you do this. Ready for this? If you go to HelloFresh.com slash HeyBabe16 and use the code HeyBabe16, you're going to get 16 free meals plus three free gifts. 16 free meals Three free gifts. If you go to Hey Babe, if you go to HelloFresh.com slash Hey Babe 16. I mean, you, there's no better deal than that. It sells itself. HelloFresh, America's number, number one, one meal one. kit. All right. Babe, there's yeah. this app called True Bill. I know. True Bill, True. baby, I love you. I put True Bill in the words, but True Blue by Madonna, and it was a fun little thing I did. True Bill, yeah. what it does is, well, you know, like when you when you subscribe to something, you forget about it. Yeah. This, this auto subscription shit. Yes. True Bill. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. True Bill goes to the computer yeah. and unsubscribes you to everything you're not using. Yeah. It is the greatest invention yeah. I have ever used. I literally, I'm, I don't know. Oh, so they say on average it, it saves up to $720 a year with True Bill. I got to be honest with you, in one month I've used it, I saved $600. So it was $600 of bills that I was paying gym fees, uh, phone things, yeah. you know, this, that. All these apps I was paying for, gone. Yeah. It's like a true bill. It's like you have someone looking over you that goes to all the companies and goes, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. You're not going to do that to him or right. her. Yes. Yeah. Or they. And it's like, or they, and it's electronic. I love Truebill. They save me so much money. All you got to do is link your accounts, and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in just one tap. Tap, 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 tap. Two million users they're up to right now. It's crazy, dude. And I'm see- now I'm starting to see the kid. Who- he's like a 27, 20-year-old kid who made Truebill. Starting to see commercials for him all over TV because his app is exploding. I mean, this kid must be worth 100 mil. Yeah. The kid found a hole, and he filled it. Fill in the holes. So don't scroll so, up a little bit. So baby. start so start like canceling your subscriptions right now. Don't fall your subscription scams at all. The only subscription you need is the true bill. Subscription. Don't fail for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash hey babe. That's all you got to do is go, go to Truebill. right now. Truebill.com slash hey babe. It, it could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash hey babe. 
Well, you always the- hear them do on the news, like the, they do the uh, birthdays. Yeah. Like in the, on the news, uh, and, and they would be like, happy birthday. And there always be like people in their late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, when people start dropping like flies in the 70s and 80s, I, I'm like, oh my God, that's wild. You know who's going to probably play football to their 100? Tom Brady. Yeah. Shout out Tom Brady. Shout out him. He's the, he's the champ. He's a Super Bowl champ. Legitimately won the Super Bowl. Tampa Bay Buccaneers in their home stadium, nonetheless. Yeah. And speaking, he's not far from 100 because he's already the oldest guy in the NFL. By far. <laughs> But one of the youngest guys in the NFL, be remiss, if, be remiss. We'd be remiss. If we didn't mention him, Kansas City Chiefs, what a stellar, stellar performance. He's from right here. He's from, Patty Mahomes. He's from Texas. Patrick Mahomes, his brother's an asshole, Jackson Mahomes. Um, his, <laughs> How his, so? His, his personal bro- experience? No, no, no. His, it's all over like the, you know, his brother, Jackson Mahomes. His brother's like keeps getting in trouble. I actually don't know what he's is doing. Is he like, hey, my brother, you know who my brother yeah, is? his brother's acts like a like a, like a a pompous jerk off. Like people don't like him. Yeah, like he does. Sounds like a fake name, just Jackson Just go down Mahomes. a little bit. Yeah, NFL reporter takes savage shot at Brittany Matthews. Yeah, downtown uh, calls out Jack. Oh, yeah, Jackson Mahomes, he wrote. He did something where, like, he went online and, like, really shit on, like, a, a bar restaurant and the waiter or waitress's performance there, and then they wrote something back. Yeah, like, like, let's go into this. Jackson Mahomes. I can't see today, so. Yeah, go yeah, down. Go down a little bit, uh, Pimpy. The the odd, uh, the re- I don't know what this is. Is that but I know Patrick Mahomes looks visibly angry at his brother. Um, is he a young kid? Yeah. Has that ever happened to you guys? Like somebody used your name and embarrassed you at a place you weren't at? Somebody, I, I tell a joke about it on stage, but it is true. Somebody ha- made a fully fake grinder account with all of my pictures <laughs> and information. And there has been multiple people that have DM'd me, gay men have DM'd me, be like, hey, I matched with you on Grindr, like... Let's hang out. I'm wherever. And I'm like, that's not me. That's not you. That's not me. If you want to know where I am, I'm at this hotel, this room. <laughs> <laughs> I have some facts about pillows. You guys. Oh, here we go. When do you think, if you had to guess, the oldest known pillow? I got to feel What that, do you really think? Yeah, okay. So we go back to like Aboriginal times, yeah? Okay. Like caveman times. Yes. They didn't have pillows. But I think someone somewhere along the early years had to fashion a sack or a satchel of right. leaves, right? They, they had to put two and two together. I mean, if they're inventing the wheel and fire, a pillow can't be far behind. You ready for this? Yeah. Pillows date back to Mesopotamia. Shout out over nine thousand years ago. The ancient Egyptians used pillows, but they were more interested in protecting the head because it was seen as the spiritual center of their bodies. Comfort was strictly optional. The Chinese were also fans of the hard pillow. Ah, they probably run that place at the hotel you were at. <laughs> yes, the hard pillow. Oh yeah, you know, man. But, these pillows are made of stone. Six pillows I sleep with. Six. Could you sleep on a stone pillow? No, no. 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 What's a stone pillow? What is it even? They said pillows pillows were, used to be made of stone and understandably less comfortable, very unlike what we think as of pillows today. In fact, it is said that these stone pillows were made to help keep bugs from calling into the ears of wealthier citizens. Oh, speaking of bugs, the story that he told today at breakfast, you have to tell them. When you went to Australia? Oh, shit. I was Dude, in- it was a little thing where I was like, <laughs> what? I couldn't believe being in the situation, but tell him. I was in the desert in Australia, like you do, what, and what you uh, I was staying in like a little, like, like a little. Uh, well, don't get me wrong; it was a nice room, but it was like, it was like this. You see a kangaroo? You know, I didn't. I didn't see kangaroos, koalas. You had to go to like a sanctuary for that. I didn't see them roaming. So the there's streets. not like a sign, like you know, like when we're driving, like you know, wherever in upstate New York, wherever it says sign for deer. There's no sign for kangaroo. I didn't, I didn't see that. I, didn't see I thought that. kangaroos were like the deers of. I thought they were like deer. We wanted to see them, and they were like, "Oh, you have to go to like the, the preserve or whatever." I don't know. We, what I would could, you rather do, real quick? Fight Jake Paul or a kangaroo? I'd rather fight. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I think a, a kangaroo would be much more interesting. Right. You know? So if you're going to get you knocked ever, out, you'd rather get knocked out by a kangaroo. Yeah, did you ever see that video of that guy? The kangaroo's fucking with his dog, and he runs out, squares up with the kangaroo, and literally punches the kangaroo in the face, and the kangaroo's like <laughs> stunned, and he just walks away? No. He squares up. You got, you got to put this in. It's the funniest thing you'll ever see. Is yeah, this yeah, it? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. I mean, you have Started to. Start from the beginning, though. You have to be drunk to square up with this freaking thing. Look, no? look, it's like it, the, the kangaroo is like, like he gets into it. They square up on each other. It's amazing. Look, he runs off because he sees the kangaroo messing with his dog. Look, this guy lives on a big field. This guy is this. This is like look, a look, look. The kangaroo has his dog around the neck in a headlock. What does he want to do to the dog? What does he want to watch, 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 watch. <laughs> then <laughs> <laughs> the kangaroo is just stunned. <laughs> and just he just leaves. He just is like, see ya, dude. Wow, how funny is that? 
You're the scariest animal, I think. That is kangaroo? scary. I might rather fight your pole, maybe, maybe your pole. <laughs> Yeah, kangaroos scary. are scary. I, I want to say kangaroos are scary, but also t- for me, like I, I personally think the scariest thing is an alligator. That's scarier to me than even a shark because an alligator, like they, they want to eat you like alive. They like drown you first. They like roll you around. They I don't want to get. I don't want to get eaten alive by a sea creature. If I was going to get eaten alive, I'd prefer to be eaten alive by a land animal. Let me ask you a question. If an alligator was on land, what's their top speed? Can you outrun an alligator on land? Well, they got very short limbs, so I want to say no. I would say that, especially with the work I've been doing on my flexibility and hamstrings, yeah. I think that I'd be able to outrun an alligator oh. since I started doing yoga with your lady. Yeah. Shout out her. Yeah, shout out her. Shout out Shavasi now. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. They're, they run 20 miles an hour. Yeah, I probably can't beat that. That's a short, a sh- those short little legs, they get up to 20 miles an hour. See, I always talk- can, we, can you see a video? Can you Google pimp uh, video uh, alligator running or something like that? I always thought that oh, here if, we go. if you weren't in the in the swamp and you got out to the land, because they always just go so slow. I, I always just thought, oh, they're not going to chase well, you. I heard you have to run in a zigzag. To get away. Because they, really? can't, they can't change yeah. direction. You're right. You're right, Pimp. They can't change it'll direction. It'll just look like at the end. Look at uh, that. Like, look, wow, they're quick It'll, it'll just look like at the end of an episode of Benny Hill. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy is I'm reading uh, a book um, called uh, Can't Hurt Me. With, with, <laughs> I thought you were going to end after the first sentence. With David. You know what's crazy? I'm reading a book. <laughs> Period. Uh, and then Pimp zooms in on my face. So, I'm like, <laughs> so David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me, and I'm pretty sure they said... And I could be wrong. I know if people might have went through this. And I'm sorry if uh, you know I was reading it uh, on the on the on the van today. But to start, to get through, I think it's Green Ranger School to become like a Green Ranger, like the elite of the elite. Power they Ranger. They drop you. Yeah, become a, to become green the Ranger? Green Power Ranger. Tommy yeah. the White Ranger. Yeah. They drop you off in a helicopter, like the military drops you off in. I think the Everglades or a swamp, and you have to wade through waters. You have your weapon, and all that, and basically get through. You, you have know, to survive to get the job. You have to survive it, like, and not get eaten by an alligator or not get, you know, killed somehow. They, they give you no food. Like, you have to pass these elite, elite tests every single year. Like, there's not been a year that's went by where somebody in one of these specialized school training, Navy SEALs, Green Ranger, whatever, they die in training every year. Somebody dies. Wow. Constantly. In Navy SEAL school, they, tr- the, the, they are actively trying to drown you. you are, they don't care if you die. Like, you have to sign waivers, and they tell your family, like, if, if they're going to pass this, they have to go through, like, they have to see the light. They have to. Oh, my God. That, that's why they're like, they want to go to those group. depths so that yes. when they, if they find themselves in those depths, they are, that's, they've been there, done it. That's all that's about. That's why they, they say, like, if you're like a Navy SEAL or a Green Ranger, like, your skill set is basically you're like the strength of, like, six soldiers. So what they'll yeah. Once you're that far into being a killing machine, can you just enjoy small things? I don't think you could do. Yeah, it. No. I mean, are you really like when you when you leave the Navy SEALs? Are you really going to work no. out like Staples? <laughs> no, uh, their brains are permanently. What does a Navy SEAL get? What's the salary of a Navy SEAL? I want to say okay. Can they're I guess? elite. They're elite, right? They have to be. They have to but be I'm making. A, I'm gonna say they don't make any more than eighty k. You. I think eighty. Why would you do it? Honor salary as how much do Navy SEALs and special ops make? Seventy six k. Oh my god! How are you that close? I've been I've been researching. It. <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay, but the the range is from fifteen nine to four hundred and twenty four. So if you're making four hundred and twenty four, with the average salary of seventy six, but 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 eighty k is what you make. Yeah, but you imagine. Okay, ready? Me and you get a me and you are Navy SEALs. We get a mission. <laughs> we get a mission together. We're out in the fucking tundra, right? right we're out there. We're, 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 we're sleeping inside the carcass of a hippo in right, the tundra. Right. I don't even know if this goes together. And we start to bullshit, and you drop on me that you make $424,000. <laughs> and you're like, what do you make? And I'm like, fifteen nine. <laughs> yeah. I would kill you right there. Right there. I would Navy kill me seal you to hands. death. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, some what do the- you got to do to be a Navy SEAL that makes a, a half a, uh, that makes that makes a half a, do you know what they Wait, have to, did it say four? How much did it say? 400,000 something. But that must be like an officer. A like, a like That must be the top Navy SEAL. That must be yeah, like the that's head. Like, 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 like that's like he runs, Rambo. Rambo. He, Isn't yeah. the real money like getting through being a Navy SEAL and then going private? Sector? That's where all the money private is when you security. become a mercenary. Mercenary, yeah. So, but, but you know, to survive Navy SEAL, there's this thing called Hell Week where they keep you awake. Like you're fully awake doing, they're running 20 miles a day exercising all day, doing all these things. They keep you awake for like 15 days. Fully awake. I think that you could do permanent damage they to somebody's health. They don't give a health. shit. 
They don't give a shit. Wow. Google Navy SEAL Hell Week. It's the crazy. When I was reading it, I was like, and I can't get on the elliptical for 25 minutes. I, <laughs> you know? I know. And I like that this guy's like, I'm up for day 14. It's I got to stay awake for every every $1,000 of my starting salary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fourth week of basic conditioning is known as Hell Week. This one, students train for five and a half days. Sorry, five and a half days with a maximum total of four hours of sleep. Oh, my God. In the God. full five and a half days. Begins midnight Sunday and ends Friday afternoon during this time. Training space. And they put it's in San Diego, and they have them go in the freezing cold water. Who wants to do this? You got to. That's what you have to do if you want to become a Navy SEAL. <laughs> I'm in the desert. I go back to my room. There was little, like, huts in the <laughs> desert. Australia. We're, we're back to Australia. Yeah, I'm in Australia. I go back to my room after eating, like, some dinner somewhere. And I go to walk up to my door, and there is a, shrimp a tarantula. On the barbie? Yeah, shrimp on the barbie. And there's a tarantula. On the doorknob to my oh. place. A tarantula is a thing I've legitimately only seen in movies. Yeah. Like, I, the, the only like, time I've seen a tarantula is Home Alone. You saw, this is on your doorknob. <laughs> it was on the doorknob, like, like, like comically on the doorknob. Like, the only place I have and to And is touch. it as big as a doorknob? Like, could you, in other words, maneuver your hand around? I, absolutely not. There was no getting, I, I was like, do I wait? Will he walk away? Well, let's just say, worst case scenario, you went to open the door because you really had to shit. Would you... <laughs> Would you, if a tarantula stung you, is that poison? Some, I think, and some not. I don't give a flying fuck either way. Did the most disgusting thing. In things. Australia, probably poison. Everything. Yeah. Bugs? I don't care about bugs. I could live amongst roaches and tarantulas. Mice and what? rats, I can't. Uh, Mice and rats. Tarantula, tarantula, we saw, we saw like, possum last tarantula is like a rodent <laughs> combined with a bug. A bug with fur? You ever uh, seen a possum? We saw an opossum yeah, terrible. on the San Antonio Riverwalk last night. We were drinking 40s out of straws, me and Pimp, like real pieces of shit. You I saw an opossum last night? We saw an opossum yeah. last night. Yeah. That Riverwalk is shady shit, man. The last time I stayed <laughs> at the Omni on the Riverwalk in San Antonio, I dreamt, I was so scared because it was very musty. I said, there's got to be water bugs in here. I went to sleep. I grabbed myself like a burrito so I wouldn't get attacked. I dreamt that a billion roaches came from the ceilings and combined ah. and made a super roach. I had a nightmare. I woke up in a cold sweat. It was the morning. I got up. I wanted to get out of there. I went to the bathroom to wash up. I moved my toiletry bag, and there was a, 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 a there was a water bug that big. I dreamt it into fruition. You manifested. And that was right by where you saw the possum. So there's shady stuff going on down there. Uh, and also before we go, because we're at the end of the episode, it's the New Year's Eve episode. Uh, you know, wow, it is New Year's Eve. Is so we're yeah. going to be in Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're is in Cincinnati today? tomorrow. We're in Cincinnati tomorrow. That's tomorrow, right. And tonight we're in Columbus, Ohio, right? Now we're in Columbus, That's Ohio right. tonight. Cincinnati tomorrow. Yeah, so, so if you're in that area, come hang out New Year's Eve with us. Yeah, at we're the at Taft the pa Theater. Palace Theater tonight, right? Palace, is it Palace Theater tonight. Taft Theater tomorrow. If we sell out tomorrow, we are going, inviting the entire crowd to where we are going to hang out. We might invite them back to our Sal's yes. Hotel Suite. <laughs> wait, wait. We actually extended that to Columbus and Cincinnati. We did. So, so it's up to you if you want to hang out. It's up to you. We want to do that for you. Come to the shows. I'm telling you, the shows that we've been doing, I go out and do half an hour of stand-up. Sal goes out and does half an hour of stand-up. Then we both come back out together and do like a mini Hey Babe where we ask the audience questions. So if you're on the fence and you want to be a part of the show or love this show, come see it. And there's surprises. We got an open act. Sometimes friends drop in like today. Tim Dillon Tim, is going to be Tim on the Dillon show tonight. Just, just pulled up. In Ohio, because his hometown guy, we got LeBron James is coming. <laughs> He's coming. Ohio, yeah. Who else is from Ohio? Who else from Ohio? I mean, LeBron is all you need, really. LeBron's from LeBron's Ohio. LeBron's going to do a tight five. Yes. Come to my hotel. We'll party after. If it sells out, I check in under the name Glagadine Capiche. <laughs> Glagadine Capiche. So, baby, it's been great. We ha hope you guys are having fun. Yeah, right now. Well, right it now, it's, uh, it's seven minutes till showtime. Literally, though, I just want to say... This 2021, at least for me, has been the best year of my career um, because of the fans and, and how it, everything has changed. So I just want to say an earnest, heartfelt thank you very much to all the fans that have uh, subscribed to the Hey Babe podcast and the Chrissy Chaos podcast, but we're on Hey Babe, so I really do genuinely mean that because Sal and I weren't sure if we were going to start the show. It took a while to start, but I'm just I'm happy we started and we did it, baby. 100%, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were talking about that for, for a while, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, we did it, and, and it flew by the year. Like that. We got a couple hundred thousand subscribers. We've doing live shows together. Yeah, and uh the Patreon's coming out soon. Patreons Patreon You know what is really uh, coming out? Swear up? to God, two weeks. Merch. <laughs> merch two weeks. <laughs> and if you've come to the shows, we've been we've sold out of the merch like that. Tupperware the, shirts. The, the merch is gone already. Gone. Uh there'll be more merch in St. Louis and more merch in Ohio. Texas merch is gone. We're gonna have three t shirts, a hoodie, socks, stickers, shoelaces. We might be dropping a denim jacket. Uh it's all in being printed right now, though the hard work is done. 
The online store will be up in a couple of weeks. Same thing for taste taste buds too. All right, baby. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been good. Enjoy your New Year. Stay safe out there. For the last time in 2021, this has been. Oh. Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe.